recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I um, came to Congress, and because of my own uh, experiences, um, I only had one ambition other than being a member of Congress, and it was uh, to uh, take leadership in uh, the Committee uh, on Housing and Insurance uh, because experientially I think I had uh, experiences that might help. And uh, secondly, having served as mayor, uh, we dealt a lot with housing in uh, Missouri's largest city. Uh, and I had this opportunity, and I want to thank uh, uh, Ms. Waters for uh, the uh, opportunity to uh, lead the, be the lead Democrat on, on the um, housing subcommittee. Uh, I, I think it was uh, fortunate, maybe even fortuitous, that uh, two Missourians ended up uh, working together, uh, and we were uh, able to, uh, I think, do some things that probably uh, might not have been done uh, otherwise, uh, because I think of, uh, we, we both had a, 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 a spirit of working together, and it, uh, it, it ended up in a good uh, product. But that wouldn't have taken place without the chairman uh, and, the, and the ranking member. Uh, I lived in 404 B. Bailey, uh, public housing in Wichita Falls, Texas. I went by on Christmas Eve, and, and I just parked there and, and for a, a long time and looked at the kids running around playing uh, and thinking I, I used to do that on that same little uh, piece of dirt uh, that we called a, a yard. And I uh, wondered uh, about the kids who were in that unit. Uh, will they eventually have the opportunities that I was blessed to have, uh, or would they suffer the fate of many others uh, with whom I grew up? Uh, and I thought, in part, we might be able to do some things here that will help the little boy I saw running around playing uh, in front of the unit I once lived in with my mother, father, and three sisters. Um, and I, I think we have done this. This is probably uh, the most sweeping uh, changes uh, in HUD regulations in a quarter of a century, and perhaps ever. Uh, and what we've done, we've, we've remodeled or, or refashioned or recast uh, or redesigned uh, many of the programs impacting HUD. I do not disagree with the, the chairman, uh, with Chairman Henseling, that we do have uh, uh, a great deal of redundancy uh, in programs that we run with HUD and USDA, uh, and I, I do think at some point uh, there's a need for us to, to get things uh, molded a little bit better, but that's not going to take place, uh, I don't think, uh, anytime soon. Uh, and I support this H.R. Uh, 3700 uh, because uh, I, I, I had the opportunity uh, to understand what these changes mean. Uh, and I also need to say before I go any further that, you know, I, I, I don't believe that uh, compromise means capitulation. Uh, in fact, I don't think democracy can work without comedy uh, and compromise. I think they, they are uh, inseparable parts of democracy. And so there are parts of this bill that I'm not as thrilled with as other parts, but that's what happens in a democracy. And uh, I, uh, again, uh, cherish the opportunity to work with people who uh, were willing to move and shake and move and shake and shake and move to get something to the floor. Uh, the bill will streamline the inspection and income review process for families living in Section 8 units. Uh, and we're making in this legislation some very badly needed changes to the project-based voucher program uh, by allowing a public housing, housing authority, PHA, uh, to uh, project-based up to 20 percent of its authorized v uh, voucher allocation rather than 20 percent of the voucher funding that we give. And then we give PHAs more flexibility with their funds by allowing them to transfer up to 20 percent of their capital funds to the operating fund. Uh, Mr. Speaker, what this allows is for people who are on the ground working with people, understanding what, where they need to have funds, 
the, the, the opportunity to move those funds around without vi violating any of the H HUD regulations. It helps our foster children by expanding eligibility for the family unification program from the current limit of 21 years of age to 24 years of age, and it increases the length of stay from 18 months to a maximum of 36 months. Uh, it also, and I think this is important, expands the eligibility for individuals uh, who will leave foster care uh, within 90 days. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back.